Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Whack and the Dubsy Bricks for the finale of building Jabba's Palace in Lego. And here it is after six months, about 150,000 pieces, we have finally finished this behemoth of a mop. And I'm so pleased with how it has come out. It has been so much fun building this. Every aspect of it I have thoroughly enjoyed. Even all of the challenging times with the gearing inside the palace, the headaches I had with the roof section here, I wouldn't change it. It has been great and a, a massive learning curve in so many ways. It has changed a lot since the initial plans for it. When I first did the video, episode one, it was originally going to be four base plates long and two wide. I did say it could extend to three by five and it became apparent after just a couple of weeks that that's what was needed and that's what I've done. The extra room was needed so I could fit all of the rooms inside to the scowl that I wanted to do so. This week has been quite a challenging week. The rock work here has been destroyed, rebuilt, destroyed, rebuilt, destroyed, rebuilt so many times. And it was because I just couldn't get it looking how I wanted it to. And in the end, as you can tell from this picture here, the Tuscan village has gone. There were two Tuscan tents I had put down here. Originally, they were up the top there. However, it just didn't look right. They were too big. They were very similar in size to the roof of that building in the middle there. And I just didn't like the look of it. And I was making the rock work look small. And it just, there were scale problems. So I decided, let's get rid of it. And let's make this more of a scene 
for the pod racers and this is probably one of my favorite parts of the mock is the pod race that is going on here these are models that i've just made up originally i had the 20th anniversary anakin pod racer just down the end there i then decided to change it up so i ripped off all the yellow and blue put black and orange on it and I was going to go down the storyline that Sebulba had bought Anakin's pod off Watto following the race that we saw in The Phantom Menace. So he, he changed it into his own colour scheme. However, when it was sat in there, it was still way too big. And I realised I had to go back to the drawing board and make something from scratch. And I wanted to make the engines about 40% of the size. And I think I've achieved it pretty well. The details, I've got as much detail in there as possible. I found out every little dark bluish grey part that I could find just to give me as much variety as possible with the pod racers. And again, with this one, very similar size to the previous one there. However, it's a different design on there because I wanted them to all look different. And even this one down here, the destroyed pod racer that's been shot by the Tuscan Raider up on here because you know the Tuscans love to have a good bit of shooting practice when the pod racers are going past. So the first pod came came through here. The Tuscan Raider had a shot, hit his target. The pilot, he ended up in the sand head first. And if the sand has covered the engines as they've slid to their final resting place and are on fire. And the little Jowers, they're already out looking for the scrap that they can get out of these. A couple of Stormtroopers, they're also up there just watching the race, enjoying it whiz past. And up the top here, we've got some more Tuscan Raiders. They're just enjoying a little bit of food by the campfire. Over here, we've got our Sarlacc pit. Now, this is not the one from Return of the Jedi. That would be miles away from the palace and will be a lot larger. However, these sort of stormtroopers have come along and one of them, he's fallen in. And I've got the inspiration for that from the Book of Boba Fett. So, yeah, they're all there trying to help them out. Don't fancy their chances, though. The Sarlacc pit was really fiddly to make, especially when you've got large fingers. And it just came out so well. I was so pleased with the look of this such a satisfying build and this again is something that i am intending on keeping long term i'm is luckily this is on the corner of a base plate so when i dismantle the mock i'm going to try and take it off so it's in one piece and finish the edges off and then put it on the shelf so i can remember this thoroughly enjoyable building experience of jabba's palace and keep that as memento of the build again when you just look down at this view i do think it's it just I'm just so pleased with it and so proud of how it's come out. The rock work has been great fun doing that. Obviously, I had a lot of practice with the back cave. However, I feel that this is a little bit better than the rock work that I did in there. Down here, we've got an archway that then leads to the hangar section. You've got a couple of Camorian guards meeting some more Jawas that have managed to find an R5 unit there. And they're trying to sell him to Jabba the Hut. The two towers that we've got here, they were very difficult to get a lot of details on really pleased with how they've come out they do blend into the rock work as i said in the last update it looks like that when you look at the footage in the book of boba fett the final tower that i made was up here and although i did have one more dome piece left from the Utapau battle pack i decided i want this one to be a little bit bigger so it's a totally different design and again really pleased with how the curvature has come out on this brick built tower here and I liked the design of that so much that I ended up changing the one on the top of here which again used to be one of the smaller domes from the Utah Power Battle Pack to this brick built one and I think that does finish that off quite nicely. Down the front here we've got the frog that you see in Return of the Jedi that's just about to have his lunch in the form of a Womprat just there and over here we have the Bomar Monk Spider and this was from the Lego set the Jabba's Palace which we purchased for the minifigures. I thought we'd add it to the mock because I think it looks pretty cool on there. I don't think it's screen accurate. I think there's more legs. I think it's six on the actual the actual creature and also something at the back of it as well. However, I thought it looked pretty cool. So we've added that to the mock. Next part we have are the Tuscan Raiders with the Banther just wandering along here. Now the Banther was great fun to make. I did look on Rebrickable, however, it was something I felt that I could build myself and there was no necessity to purchase the instructions for it. I'm really pleased with how this has come out. And I think this will probably survive after I've destroyed Jabba's palace. 
And here we have a skeleton remains of some creature a lot just outside of the palace. And this was in inspiration from the scene you see in A New Hope. And at the back here, we have an R2 unit hiding in the rockwork, trying to stay out of the way of the Tuscan Raiders. The rocks here lead through to the main buildings. Now, all three of these towers, they could be removed from the mock. They're just sitting on tiles. They did originally slide out this way. However, I have now built plates up once I finished them to keep them in place. And it just gave it that nice finished look. This one is still removable, which I need to remove so I can get into the palace and show you around. But all three of these towers are solid. They have such a support structure all the way up inside them. And the main tower weighs an absolute ton. And here we have the best view of the three towers. I'm so pleased with how these have come out. As I mentioned during the build series, the tower locations were so difficult to work out where to put them. In the different images that you see, even in Return of the Jedi, in literature that you see, the Book of Boba Fett, they're constantly moving around. One minute this tower's on the left, the next minute's on the right. And I said earlier on in the build series that I was just doing it from the opening scene of Return of the Jedi, which has this tower in the middle here, which is why it is this way round. So in some of the images I've shown in this video, it shows that tower on the other side. However, I'm sure there must have been two of these towers, one either side. However, I decided to go for just the one. With the details on here, you can see how many one by one and one by two plates have been put into each section just to get all of those details on there. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I reckon this mock is 150,000 pieces at least. And some people might find that hard to believe. But when you have a closer look, you can see thousands of one by one studs in here. These buildings, as I mentioned, they're solid and they are so much filler brick in there, let alone all of the filler brick that's in here. I have the, I've lost track of the amount of cups of filler brick that I've purchased just to make this mock, let alone the orders on Brick Lincoln from Lego.com. Overall, I could not be happy of how these three towers have turned out. He tried to get all of the details in there, like the steps that curl around to the side. And even on the front here, you'll see the sand detail that's just on the top of the brown part of the door there, as you would have seen in Return of the Jedi. So I wanted to try and get as much attention to detail as possible. The scale of this is obviously not accurate. It'll probably need to be about five or six times bigger than what I've made here to make it accurate to the films. But overall, yeah, the, that, that image is just so satisfying to look at. Really pleased with the end result of it. Anyway, that's uh, the outside. Let's turn our attention to the inside. And here we have the throne room itself. And I'm really pleased with how this has come out and all of the details that we've managed to get into there. Even the stairs veer off to the right hand side and the wall is curved inside of there. The arches, they were quite a challenge to start with, but again, really happy with how they have turned out. And we've even got Boba Fett there standing on the stairs. Max Rebo, I didn't have the actual minifigure, so I've done the best I can with a brick bill figure. I know it doesn't look much like him, but you get the general idea. And I've used the band members you get in the Mos Eisley Cantina set for the singers in this part. If we go over to the back here, you'll see the two drummers there bashing away on the drum. And at the back here, we've got the Gavarian Death Gang. Now, I know they weren't in Return of the Jedi or even in the original trilogy. However, I think they're such cool looking figures that I wanted to add them to the mock. And here we have Han Solo hanging in carbonite. And again, I wanted to try and get as many details as I saw in the film, hence the table to the right and that other little table section to the left here. Now at the back of the palace here, this area here and here would have actually been stairs. And if the tower had been on top, I may possibly have put some stairs in there. However, I've just used them as cut sections so you can actually see the different parts of the palace here. And as you can see, there are even stairs at the back under that archway up there, as you would see in the palace itself. And at the back here, you have got the boobs. Now with these boobs, it would have been nice if I was able to push the chairs and the table just a little bit further forward so the figures were more in the arches. However, the arches are only six studs wide and it would have made it a little bit crowded. So I've opted to put them at the back here. 
And if you look closely, you even see that the arches are at the same angle as those inverted slopes behind. And that took a little while to get the technique just right to make it work inside that. But again, really happy with the overall look of this palace. Now at the top here, you can see Ula the dancer and she is on the trap door. And we have got a couple of working mechanisms in the throne room here. So when you pull a lever, the trap door will open and she will fall all the way through. And out the bottom, she will pop. And you can see the gate at the back there. Now this goes up and down depending on whether or not the trap door is up or down. And that took absolutely ages to get that working right. I needed it so the trap door would open and the minifigure would fall through before the gate got to the bottom. Once the victim has fallen through you can turn another wheel and Jabba the Hutt will slide smoothly forward until he gets to the platform and there he can watch the poor victim get killed and eaten by the Rancor. The Rancor here, as you can see, is brick built and this took absolutely ages. And you, and you can see the Gamorian Guard in the grasp of the Rancor. And down here, we've got Luke Skywalker with bone in hand, ready to pop it in the Rancor's mouth. This Rancor was so difficult to build and it took a whole week just to get him right. The first one I made, I was really happy with, <laughs> put it in the mock and it was almost as tall as the room here. So I had to start from scratch, which was a shame. But all, all in all, happy with how it came out. As you can see, there's another cog here. And if you turn this one here, the door will go up. And you can even see the teeth on the bottom of the door. So Luke would run through into this room, turn around. And then once he's done so, he picks the skull up, throws the skull, and it activates the door. And it drops down onto the rancor's head. And I'm sure if I put the rancor there, it will kill him because that door is very heavy. So this side here is the Rancor holding pen. So this is where he would be. And then we have the Rancor Keeper's quarters in here. And this is the corridor where the Rancor Keeper would be waiting, looking through. And that's where he will be when he finally sees the Rancor die. Down here, we have got the prison cell area. And on this one, you can see the tentacle. And it's coming through and grabbing C-3PO as he's on his way to the droid torch room. But don't worry, he managed to get there all in one piece. And this was such fun to build this droid torch room. The droids in here, the brick built ones, the best I could do with the parts that I could find available. And pretty happy with how it's come out. You see Gonk droid there upside down having his feet burnt. And the poor medical droid there having his arms ripped off. And at the back, not from this film obviously, but we got Dio. He's already been destroyed and has been chucked into a crate. And there's R2-D2 and C-3PO awaiting their fate. With these prison cells, both these door sections are removable. This one here, there, there's nothing in there as I decided I want to have the tentacle coming out of there. However, behind this one here, we've got Han and Chewie. So you just pull this section out and there you can see Han and Chewie in the prison. And again, I wanted to get the light looking right through there. So I purposely put it so that there's a line going across the middle of it as you see in the film. And again, that took quite a while just to get it looking exactly how I wanted it. And it took quite a while waiting for parts to come in to get the effects that I wanted to do with that. So this section here, originally I was just going to block it off. However, I thought I might as well make use of the space in there. Contemplated putting a kitchen in there like you see in the book of Boba Fett. However, didn't think that'd be that interesting. So I thought, why not have a bounty hunter hideout? So this is where all the bounty hunters are enjoying some relaxation and I know the majority of them or pretty much all of them were not in Return of the Jedi however I thought they're such infamous characters in the Star Wars universe they should be in there like Cad Bane, Bosk, IG-88, Forlom, Zuckus and Dengar and I really do like how this little room has turned out and here we have the final interior part of the palace the hangar and as you can see we have the slave one down there by the door speeder bike in the corner and a skiff just here on the end i tried to get as many details as possible in this hangar as you can see on the roof there there are a couple of cylinders hanging down we've got this little platform here that's on a couple of string bits and all of these are from literature that i saw and on the floor we've done a mixture of tiles and studs just to give it a bit of texture and a bit of effect but i was really pleased with the effect of the roof section in this room it was a great challenge using the technic beams flex tubing 
and all other bits, bits and pieces, just trying to get the angles right. It took quite a while, but it was so satisfying once it was done. And the thousand plus ingots are the finishing touch on the roof section just there. So there we have it, Jabba's Palace made out of Lego. I hope you enjoyed this video and also the build series as much as I've enjoyed making it. It really has been a thoroughly enjoyable build and I've loved every second of it. So pleased it took that extra week to finish the mock off rather than rushing it at the end. I feel that the changes I've made to the mock in the past week have certainly been an improvement to the mock. I'm really pleased and proud of how it's this second large scale mock has come out here on the channel. Building techniques and skills that I've acquired whilst making this mock have been great fun. And I'm sure they're going to be really helpful in future mocks as well. So I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's followed the build series, watched the video, commented, subscribed or shared the video. So grateful to you all. If you haven't already subscribed, it would be much appreciated if you did. The more people that are enjoying the channel, the easier it is for other people to find Dubsy Bricks. And it helps the channel to grow and it helps me to continue making these large scale mocks. And a big thanks to Mrs. Dubsy Bricks, all of the trips she made to the Pick a Brick Wall, and her general support has been fantastic. Next build series, as you may well know, is going to be Mandalore. I know there's going to be a lot of challenges with this build. I've already changed my initial plans for how it's going to look, and I'm making it a lot more complex than I was originally planning to do so. So I'm really looking forward to taking those challenges on. So watch this space for the new series that's going to be coming very, very soon. So over the next week or two, I'll be dismantling this mock, sorting the bricks, rearranging the Lego room so I can set up Gotham City and making space for Mandalore as well. The city updates, they're going to be continuing to come out every Wednesday. But I'm going to probably put out an extra one on a Saturday until I start Mandalore, which is only going to be a couple of weeks anyway. Um, if I feel that there is enough quality content that I'm making all the time, then I will probably go up to three videos a week, as I did initially when I started the channel up. There will be one final Javis Palace video coming out which I'm hoping to get uploaded ready for Monday and that's just going to be showing you the last week's uh, building techniques I used and how we got to this finale so hopefully you'll tune in for that one as well anyway once again thank you for watching please give the video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it subscribe share and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content on the channel thanks for coming by see you next time bye for now